Hello and welcome to an entire video about bees and honey and all related things. So I'll go through where to find bees, why we want honey in the first place, how to move them, how to breed and farm and automate the honey production. So let's begin with why do we want honey? Well, it's food. That's one thing. It will restore six hunger, that means three icons, and it will remove any poisonous effects that you might have. So that's a pretty good thing. The honeycomb blocks is purely decorative. You To craft it, you have to collect honeycombs, which are used in, in uh, crafting. So we'll get back to that in a while. And then the honey block. Either to store honey in a more efficient way, or to use it as a block. You can't jump from it very easily, unless you're in creative. Uh, you can slide down it, like this. It will re reduce fall damage, and you can also use it in some redstone builds uh, similar to slime blocks. I will not go into those details though. So let's begin with where we can find the bee nests. These are called nests and these are called hives. So I will probably say <laughs> mix them together at times, but they function very much the same. These are the wild version and these are the crafted ones. And I can mention that you craft these from six planks and three honeycombs, like this. This will give you a beehive and those, but except for the name, they function very much the same. So let's talk about where to find them. They have a 5% chance to spawn in plains biome and sunflower plains biome. And then they can spawn in other places, but the chance is lower. The super flat world is, as you can see on the left side, is a plains biome. That means they can spawn here, but only if the tree, which can be a birch or oak, grows within two blocks from a flower. Any flower should do, and it needs to be there before. It should also work with bone meal, uh, it doesn't really matter. So here I planted 20 trees times three, and this gave me two nests one nest and two. So slightly above what I expected. And they look like this when they are out in the wild. And this one is ready to be harvested. You can see it's dripping with honey. It's filled up. And you can leave them here. You don't need to craft your own, uh, your own hives. You can just keep them here or you can move them to your base. Uh, which can be a good thing because it's slightly easier to farm and harvest them if you have them in a better controlled area. But let's first show how it looks. Simply right click a bottle on the full beehive or nest. This will give you the honey. Let's see, we have 11 and I do like this. And now I have 12. You can also see that they became really angry. And if I weren't in creative mode, they would have attacked me and damaged me and probably poisoned me as well. So, but there are ways to, to handle this. We'll go into that in, uh, in a minute. The other way to harvest is to use shears. This will give you the honeycombs. And let's see if, no, it's not ready over here. And if we have bees here as well, um, they will jump out. Before we do that, let me demonstrate the silk enchanted axe that I have. So if you break a block, um, either a nest or a hive, and there are bees inside, they will be angry and you will not get any loot. You will not get the nest, but you will get the hive uh, if you break it, but the bees will be angry, you will not get the honey. So, but you can use a silk touch. Doesn't need to be just uh, the axe, it can be any tool, but silk is required. Because now we can carry it with us, we can place it wherever we want. The bees and the honey, they are still in there. We can place it back here and everything should be fine. 
So that, that's a good idea. Uh, it's, very, it's a good way to move the bees and the hives where you want them. I should also mention that if they sting you, they, they die. If they lose their stinger, they will die after a minute or so. And Oops, like this. If they have a successful attack, let's see, it doesn't seem like they can hit me for some reason. Oh well, they are angry and I get poisoned and they can die. They can also die from water. Oh now everyone's coming. So let's drop this and leave me alone. They can also die from water if you, for example, want to take them to your base. To leave the nest and you have the hives already or empty nests, you can actually pull them with you like this. With the lead. Works just fine. And note that water, so taking them on a boat, they might die if you cross uh, an ocean or something like that. You can also use a rose or a, any flower, dandelion, rose, whatever. So you can lure them with that. And they are also used for breeding to get more bees. So we should get a bee baby here. Yep. Note that every hive or nest can only contain three bees. That's the maximum. Okay, so now when you have collected some bees and some nests, or you have you have hives and you have gathered your bees, what to do? Well, First of all, you can move them anywhere you want. You can place them in a snow biome, even though they shouldn't like the, the cold. The, they are, seem to be fine with that. You can also move them to the nether or the end, uh, which can be a good thing because there is no day cycle there. So that means during nighttime, when the bees will hide in their nests or hives, they will continue to work in the nether or end. There's also no rain there because they will also hide during rain, but not in the nether or, or the end. They don't need clearance to sky, you can have them underground, works perfectly fine. And if you contain them in a room with flowers, they will actually be quite efficient because they won't go off too far, and uh, they will stay in there and just work for you. Okay, so let's get back to the honey now. Um, once we collected the honey, as you can see, I have a few here. We can start to store it. Honey bottles stack to 16, like this. Um, but you can convert them like this into a honey block. You will get your bottles back, so you can reuse those. Uh, and honey blocks store to 64. So that's a much more efficient way of storing them, and you can always turn them back into honey bottles like this. Okay, so now I want to collect honey in a safe way. Smoke makes bees calm. That's a good, very good thing. Smoke comes from fire, so if I do like this and this, you can see that I have a campfire below. Uh, and this smoke makes it so the, the bees are more calm. If I take an empty bottle, here and I right click see they are not aggravated not angry at all I can use the shears oops move it and I got the honeycomb out but you should remember to remove the fire or seal it because fire is dangerous for bees they might die from them so don't place a campfire there and just forget them because in some time you might kill all the bees in a nest or hive. Okay, so this seems a little, a little bit better, but I think we can actually do it even better than that. When it comes to redstone, a nest or a hive will output a redstone signal based on how filled up they are. So if we go into the debug version in our menu and look at this on the right side, it says honey level 5. That's the maximum amount. It can be 1 to 5, and once it reaches 5, it's ready to be harvested. This one has only level 1, so it will output power 1. So this is how much you can 
get out of it. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Yes, use the comparator and then use it for whatever you want. A dispenser can be a good thing. So the dispenser is good for two things. First of all, you can actually harvest the honey or honeycombs without the smoke in a safe way. So as you can see, I have glass bottles in here. This one is full and I'm simply click the button, button and suddenly I have a honey bottle in here. Okay. Same thing goes with the shears. Here I just put the, uh, the comparator and then the redstone around, going back to just power this lamp. This lamp will tell me that this one is ready to be harvested. Come here and press the button. And with the shears, it functions the same and they are not angry. And now the light is out. So now when it comes to the dispenser method, there are two things to consider. First of all, with the bottles, the honey bottle ended up in here. And that's uh, important to know because the dispenser has this little detail. So if we fill this up to 64 in each, and I start to click the button repeatedly, repeatedly, it would have been good if it only used up the first slot and then the second and then the third because then I could come here and harvest the honey bottle after some times, right? But as you can see, it's totally random what slot it uses. So that means that if the honey bottle is still in here, if I place it back here, and next time this is full, or in, perhaps in this case it's full with some automation and I press the button or that it just looks full. Well, now it's spit out an empty bottle because this one is not, uh, it has no honey to collect. If I do it again, at some point, some random point, oh, I need to, oh, there it is, yeah. It will spit out the honey and then this one will still be filled up. So you can't do it like that. It's not that simple. So it and with the shares, even though if you're using it manually or with a dispenser, the honeycomb will never end up in the dispenser. It will always fall out. So let's begin with the method that I know the answer to. And that's the item sorter variant. So in this setup, I have the comparator and I have five redstones and then redstone dust. And then I have a repeater and then another repeater. I can actually, to make it more visible, I can exchange this to be like this. So when we get a full honey, uh, full honey, uh, filled honey nest, <laughs> a filled honey filled bee nest or beehive. This one will be powered and this will turn on and this one as well and that will activate the dispenser. Uh, we should be, have time to go through it before. This one has 500 bottles in it already. That means that this comparator will output one. If we get one more honey bottle in here, oh, okay we're close, next time this will be turned on. Next time, this one will be filled up. We get one more power here that will turn this on and this repeater on and turn this torch off, which will activate this hopper down here to suck out the bottle from here. So we have five in here and there's one in here and they will all end up in this chest. So let's take a moment here to see how it will all play out once it's full. And that was a perfect timing. It was pretty fast. And now we have one more. Still have five. So the five here will prevent that these glass bottles will be emptied. Just remember to have one slot for honey bottles. If you can fill you can fill it up like this. No problem, but one needs to be honey. Or for the honey. So that this is a totally automated you can also seal it off, like I mentioned before. You can have glass on the sides or whatever. 
to keep the bees in here, uh, which will increase the production slightly. And then I just want to mention that you can do a similar thing with, uh, with the honeycombs. Although I ne never made, got it to work, uh, these designs come from the Minecraft wiki, by the way. Uh, but I didn't get this one to work with... Oh! It seems to work. So that's great, because it didn't before. So this works roughly the same. Comparator, five redstone dust, and then the dispenser with shears, and seal off everything, which will force the honeycomb to be pushed out in this area inside and then suck through the block down to the hopper. It didn't work before, so I'm glad to see it working. I don't know how reliable this is, but uh, apparently it can work. Okay, I hope I covered everything important in this video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know where to leave them, and um, I hope I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care. And bye-bye.